Welcome back to Hard Cut. Today, we discuss Barbarian. It's pretty good. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. All right, yeah. see you next time. So Barbarian is about a woman who rents an Airbnb in the middle of an absolute shithole in Detroit. <laughs> yes. And when she gets there, she finds that there's already someone staying there. A man. A, a man. <laughs> yeah. Against her better judgment. Against her better judgment. She decides to spend the night. And Story unfolds from there. Yes. It kind of takes like a typical approach that you would expect a story like this to take. Yeah. It hit the beats in the right ways and then it subverts. But not in the Ryan Johnson way. <laughs> but not in the Ryan Johnson way. It subverts way. in the way that you're supposed to subvert. Yes. So the tension builds as the main character, Tess, gets ready to spend the night with Bill Skarsgård's character. And you don't really know if he's like a good guy or if he has some kind of ulterior motive. He's acting like a good guy. Yeah. He's being very nice. He's showing her that he has a reservation booked and letting her do her thing. She goes in the bathroom, locks the door, changes. He's trying to give her her space. and. And you're just waiting, like, when right. is this guy gonna like do something? Yeah, and it's actually really good casting having him do it. Yeah, because, he's a creepy guy. Because he looks creepy. I thought you wouldn't want any if you didn't see me open it. So I waited. I'm good. And he's got the eyes for even, it. Even though yeah. he doesn't have the, the intent or whatever, there's just still something unsettling. And I think that right. it was actually good casting because just physically, <laughs> There's something unsettling right. about him. Yeah, he's got intense eyes. Yeah, so he does. when you look at him, you're like, he's saying nice things, but I feel like he's gonna turn into Pennywise. But, and that, that tension carries over pretty well yeah. with Tess yes. and the audience experiencing that. And you're with it. Yeah, part of what makes horror movies work is basically you're asking the audience to suspend belief. And when you are watching a horror movie, the reason why it's able to carry on half of the time is because characters make stupid decisions. They basically just put themselves in these bad situations and make it worse for themselves. But in this movie, it does a pretty good job of like putting these two characters in this really awkward situation. Yeah. Her being like the female of the situation, not trusting him. Logically, the way it plays out is actually Pretty how realistic. How it would play out. How now, it would play out. Is every decision a decision that someone in real life would make? Probably not. But right. they do a good job at removing alternative choices. Yes. So, exactly. shithole neighborhood in Detroit. There's nowhere else for her to go. It's the middle of the night. She's trying to like book hotels. There's no hotels. So, it's that or she's sleeping in her car outside. And this is not the type of neighborhood you want to sleep in your car yeah. outside. Yeah. It, it looks like a war zone outside. Right. So they put her in this position where she kind of has no choice mm -hmm. but to stay there. Right. But yeah, she can sleep in the bedroom. He'll take the couch. She can lock the door. It'll be okay. Yes. And it's not until she goes to bed that night that things start to unfold a little bit. Yeah, the creepy shit starts to the happen. The creepy shit starts to happen. But still, we don't know if, if it's, Bill Skarsgård is, involved. is involved or not. And the tension there is, is, is pretty good. So that first night happens, basically the thrust of the movie, the plot of the movie kicks in. Basically, our lead character finds an underground series of tunnels <laughs> that are underneath the house. Scary tunnels. Some creepy shit. Yeah. And uh, Skarsgård has already gone in. She goes in after him. After the culmination of the scene, the climax of the sequence, we Hard cut. We smash cut to and the organizations really organized. PCH, California, Red sunny day, red convertible, music blasting, music blasting, Justin Long. Just living his best life, driving down the PCH. Wind in his face. Wind in his face, singing along, and that's when <laughs> the movie really takes a turn tonally. Yes. And it's amazing. It works flawlessly. Now, this is where we start to get into different type of character development, as opposed to what we have with Skarsgård and Georgina Campbell in the beginning, those yes. two characters. Justin Long comes along, <laughs> 
and he's hilarious. Justin Long is fucking great in this movie. He's incredible. He's this might be his best role. Like he is absolutely fantastic in he's this movie. He's peak long in this movie. Yes, because we like him, that makes us a piece of shit. Right. Which we'll get into. Of course, of in, course. In, in because a his bit. character, you find out when you first <laughs> meet him, is kind of being me too He's accused of. He's accused of rape. <laughs> <laughs> he's accused of like him. <laughs> His agent calls him and his lawyer telling them that he's off the show because of these allegations. And he's like, these allegations are total bullshit. And of course, I mean, you know, gotta prove that shit in a court of law. The way he reacts. His reaction is very genuine. What's she saying I did? Is she saying I raped her or something? AJ, why don't you just calm down? No, okay. what the fuck is she saying? Yes, she's saying that you raped her. He plays it very well. The way he reacts, you believe him. They're kicking him off the show. Yes, kicking and, him off the show. And he now, needs money. He needs the money for potential lawyer fees, yes. et cetera, his, et cetera. Uh, his very high LA mortgage. And he decides that he needs to liquidate properties that he owns, rental properties yes. in Detroit. And then we follow his character for most of the second half of the film as yeah. he then goes there and discovers this house and he just keeps elevating the comedy. Every he, time he's on screen, it, he just gets better, better, and, better and better and more hilarious. That's nuts. What if somebody trashed the place? How, how would I know? Is the place trashed? No, Bunny, the place isn't trashed. That's not the point. The point is it's... He's like a total fucking tool, but in the best sense, like he, he's just so In the so most entertaining, entertaining way. Yeah. And then he discovers what our characters in the beginning discovered. Yeah, he sees the luggage. The luggage. He sees like toothbrush, uh, the, her toothbrush. Clothes. It's yes. all left over in the Airbnb, so he thinks they're squatters. Do I have squatters? Have a nice day. Hello? Where are these people? Right. We don't know. All of this eventually does lead him to the basement. Yes. But before we get to that part, there is a scene in the movie where he gets a phone call from one of his old friends. Guess who's back in town? And uh, he goes to meet up with his friend at a bar. And while we're there, his friend's like, give it to me straight. What actually happened between you and that girl? And then, of course, the way he explains it. Let me be real with you. We fucked. We did fuck, okay? Right. She just took some convincing is all. That's okay. it. Did she say no? Did I she, mean, like, no stop? At first, in the beginning, she was like, no, whatever. But like, and then we started fooling around more and then she was down. Like, right. fucking really down. Yeah, so basically <laughs> now we have a legitimate piece of shit that we're dealing yes. with. He's not a, a good guy. He's not a good guy. He's a piece of shit guy. Yes. And we're supposed to feel bad now about that all the things that we that, laughed at. Now we can put him in these perilous situations. It's almost like this weird thing where it's like, oh, you liked him? You like him? You thought he was funny? You, you well, piece fuck of shit. you. You're a piece you're of shit. You're a piece of shit. You're just like him. You're, you're just a like rapist because you thought he was a funny character. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe you shouldn't have written him so funny because yeah. he was pretty hilarious. Yeah. Anyways, so then he eventually finds the secret passageway in the basement that leads to all these tunnels. It leads to my favorite scene in the movie. The best scene in the movie. So obviously he wants to sell this property and he wants to maximize his profit the most. The square footage. So he goes on the internet to search if he can <laughs> add basement square does footage. basement square footage count. And so then he finds some like loophole that it possibly does. And then he goes downstairs. <laughs> Starts measuring the basement. Measures the basement. He goes right past the bloody mattress with the camera set up in the secret torture room <laughs> and just moves it and just starts measuring the room and just, yes extra square footage, finds another secret path down into a further dungeon and continues to measure down the steps. Hilarious. This whole sequence, we're great. fucking laughing our asses off. It was so good. And was, he plays it so well. It was funnier than I, I think they may have even intended. Yes. Because but he was so funny and likable. All the red flags that were in his face just were flown completely out the window because he was so focused on the square footage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was. He's he's moving the cages out of the way that probably held captives, prisoners. Just pushing them out of the way, measuring the square footage, no problem. And then we move into the deep dungeon now, when he runs out of his measuring tape and then he starts to discover yeah. more. Yes. Then finally, the reality of the situation starts kicking in. Uh, hello. <laughs> this is where we get into spoiler territory. So. This is the end of the video for you if you don't want spoilers. Right. But we I will say this though, go see the movie. Go see it. It's worth seeing. Worth seeing. But at this point in the movie, this is where we see the story's monster yet again. It's basically this really creepy, tall, strong, inbred, naked woman monster. Yeah. 
she's very lanky and tall and naked and dirty. And Genuinely creepy though. Gross. Yeah. She was very creepy. The way that they shot that, seeing her coming out of the darkness, all that stuff, supremely creepy. Very effective. Really well done. But we get a little bit of that again with Justin Long's character. He first walks by the room that... He sees the room with the TV playing the little baby video. Television. Old school TV with a VCR combo on it. Yes, all it is is just like this old tutorial basically <laughs> out of, out of breastfeed. breastfeed. Yeah. That's when he freaks out, he tries to run for it, right. and ends up falling, falling into a cage into hole. Falling into a cage hole with <gasps> Georgina Campbell from the beginning. She's yeah. still alive, she didn't die, even though, spoiler, Bill Skarsgård got his fucking head crushed by this bitch. <laughs> he was a good guy. Turned out. Yeah, it turns out that he actually, he was all along, he actually was just a, a good guy. Yeah, they subverted. <laughs> I was subverted and yeah. I enjoyed it. Yeah, so now the two of them are together, trapped, and they, they got to figure out how to escape. We learn a little bit more about the what's history. going the history they about jump what's back going in on. Time. Yeah. They, I like the There's another time uh, aspect jump. Yeah. ratio change in the film. The film goes into a four by three aspect ratio. The colors pop. Yep. It's shot with like a really wide angle lens, 18 yes. millimeter lens or yes. something. Detroit in its heyday. Yes. Detroit in its gentrified. <laughs> in its gentrified. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then you meet the the guy who owns this house, and he he's some kind of sick serial killer who brings women back, uh, yeah. has babies with them, and then it has... breeds them together, and then he yeah breeds with those babies, and then just creates this whole inbred cycle and that's what the, that's the what this thing is thing the entity woman whatever she is it was the guy who killed bruce wayne's parents yeah. in batman begins wallace joy my best he's the rapist inbreeder mm -hmm. and then they try and escape it was pretty good that that whole sequence of them getting out of there and then it wasn't until they get to where they think they're safe for the night when <laughs> the movie takes a hard left turn and just throws everything out the window that we had come to love yeah, up to this point. It gets a little shitty. It gets a, the ending is is a little sloppy. It's so disappointing because what everything that came before it was pretty was, solid. Was very yeah. solid. And also you can tell that the filmmaker really took into account like as I was sort of indicating earlier like the logic of the situation and yes. like what would be done if you what were would be in the done situation? if you're in a situation like what's the audience going to be thinking when they're watching this because right. that's the most aggregate rating thing is when you're watching oh, her car movie. is still parked outside get in the car where are her car keys yes she doesn't know yes you know yeah they're inside the house somewhere it's like well there's some crazy creature chasing you you're gonna run yes it's just for the most part the director did a really good job of yeah. acknowledging all of that right and that's what made the first half of the movie enjoyable and it just wasn't frustrating most of the time when i watch horror movies yeah I get you frustrated. get frustrated at characters decisions yes because you're smart enough as a viewer knowing why would you do that right that's stupid and yeah. then they do it and it just takes you out of it yeah the enemy of horror movies is competency yes. you know what i mean and but the more competent a character is yeah. generally the better the movie is yes exactly and so it's always cool to see just like competent people making competent decisions right and you know everyone's human no one's perfect and so you're gonna you're gonna make mistakes and that's of course what filmmakers rely on yes. to have a horror movie work but in this case for the most part the characters were pretty sound in their decisions until the end <laughs> until the end when and then that's when the bullshit horror movie tropes set in they set in hard yeah uh everyone did the wrong thing then we we started getting all the uh physics defying deaths or things that should have led to death yes that didn't the, the water tower stuff right the cave creature basically becomes the kool-aid man and crashes in through a wall Busts through a concrete wall yeah like she is the kool-aid man i've been living in this place more than 15 years and she ain't never came in this motherfucker. <laughs> Yeah. or something with supernatural powers. Yeah, she hulks out. She hulks out. She manages to dive off of a water tower that's at least three stories high and no problem surviving there. This is the point that Justin Long's character comes to a head in terms of how the audience should feel about him. Right before the Kool-Aid Man scene, he has a little redemptive moment where he acknowledges the bad things he's done in his life. Yes. And he, he has a very sobering moment about whether or not he's a good person or a bad person. And he plays it really well. And he plays it very well. He says like, am I a bad person? Am I a good person who just did a did really a bad, bad thing? thing? Right. You see him have a moment of personal reflection, you know. And uh, growth. And also we should mention that at this point in the film, 
uh, there was a scene where as they're getting out, he mistook the girl for the creature and shot her. Once he approaches her at Caesar, he feels absolutely horrible for doing and that. And it felt genuine. And it felt genuine. And then he helps and her he get helps out. And he helps her get out. He picks her up and yeah. they walk out together. Right. So you see the redemptive arc of yes. this character. And then it all goes out the window. The Phil second the Kool-Aid Man scene happens. Filmmakers couldn't help themselves. They couldn't help themselves. They're like, nope, we're not giving this piece of shit yeah. a redemptive arc. He has to just regress back into the cup. Well, yeah. And then, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, and then you he know, does they were like, everything they were we... like, we're going to call the film Barbarian, but is the Barbarian going to be the inbred creature, the creature I, I, or the man? Is it the man or the white man? Is it the, is it the white toxic male? But obviously they, they want us to be just fully behind, like, Correct. fuck him. Yes. Like, I don't care what it was. Like, right. he, doesn't, yeah. he doesn't deserve a fair, uh, he doesn't deserve a fair trial. <laughs> a fair trial. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't deserve a fair trial because he's obviously guilty already. Yeah. He's a piece right? of shit. He's a piece of shit. Now, Yes, the, he is a piece of shit. We don't know the details of what happened with the alleged rape. All we know is what we've seen him do since then. Yes. Which is help save this girl. Yeah. And then have this great moment where he is reflective on who he is as a person. This is the moment where this character could earn forgiveness for his past sins, grow as a person, become a better person, but instead, the filmmakers chose to say, no, there is no redeeming this person. And he gets up, leaves her there, runs away, and now she's trailing behind, does nothing to help her. Right. Oh, by the way, All he's, the while, he's, he, got, the he's gun. got a gun. He still has a gun. He's got a gun in his belt. Yes. He decides to run up a water tower, big spiral staircase. She runs up after him, just falling down, like, help me, help me. And he's like, yeah, come on, just run. And then they get to the top. He realizes, wait a minute, it's a dead end. No shit. Didn't see that coming. Then she gets up to the top. <laughs> and since she's injured and could, like, she, she's like losing the ability to be mobile, basically, he says, well, I can use you to slow it down and I can get away. I can get away. So he <laughs> throws her off the water tower. <laughs> and then the entity dives off after her because that's her baby. Somehow gets under her after she jumped off after her, breaks the fall, and then Long goes down now you know he's irredeemable piece of shit. He just pushed this woman to her death, gets down there. Oh wait, she's still alive. Somehow she fucking <laughs> lives through that. And when she's waking up, he goes over to her and he's just like, oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. Uh, I, I, I needed to do that though. You understand, basically. You understand, right? Come on, come on, I'll help you get to a hospital. Yeah. And it's like, now he's trying to be the good guy again? Yeah. And it just, it, did, it didn't work. Anyways, the fucking creature gets up and then now he gets his comeuppance. Okay, gets his comeuppance, gets yeah. his freaking eyes popped he's out. He's a piece of shit guy. Right. You know, who's the barbarian, the creature, or is it him? Mm. Or is it the other toxic white male in the movie that kidnapped all the females in the beginning well, that who's, guy the, too. who's the true barbarian of the film? Right. All the while forgetting about wonderful Bill Skarsgård in the beginning of the film, who's a totally decent dude who just yeah. gets a raw deal. Yeah. Fuck him. And then that's that's it. That's the but, end. You know, she takes out the creature and uh, we're done. It lost me there. Yeah. I was I was really digging that movie until the end. They took it to a point where, okay, we've subverted so hard, now we're taking it right back to what it shouldn't be. Yes, we're taking it back to fuck this guy. Right, we're taking it right back to fuck this guy. And it's like, oh, you had a chance. Yeah. You had a chance to really, truly subvert and make these two characters work together and make it. Yeah. And have this guy with his redemptive arc. I think that like, when you're watching it, you like her just she because- was, She was likable, yeah. She's, she's very likable. She was a really good actress. Uh, but you like her. She I think. wasn't stupid. She wasn't stupid. That's what that's what I was gonna say. Right. That's she what wasn't I was getting a typical to. Typical stupid. She was like very competent. She was competent. And and again, audiences really relate to competence. Yes. If your character's competent, you're like you're rooting for them because yeah. it's like, yeah, they're doing the right thing, but shit's still going wrong. Yeah. If they're doing the wrong thing, you're like, please die. Everything Just die already. everything she does, it's it's like I would hope I would be that way in that situation right. too. Exactly. You know, she's like the best representative of being in that situation. Right. If you had to rate this film one to 10, 
I wish I can like just be like, okay. it's like before the last 10% of the movie, this movie had me. I'd give it probably like an eight and a half, nine. I'd probably give it like an eight, eight and a half. Yeah. But it's not the world we live in. <laughs> um, that being said though, we're sort of shitting on the end right now, rightfully so. Right. But it didn't ruin what came before. It didn't. It just kind of tainted it, it a little. It bit. tainted it a little bit, and it's like it's just a. It's like the case of the filmmakers just couldn't help their, themselves. Their current ideology, yeah. they just couldn't help themselves. But it still, at the end of the day, it is solid filmmaking. It's a really it well made. It was movie. effective. Yes. So I think I'd give the movie a seven, <laughs> seven point five, seven point five. Okay. All right. Oh my god. I would. I would give it. I'd give it a seven. The fuck, dude. It was good. I probably would have given it like a, maybe an eight, like you said, but the ending took a little out of it for me. A little more than half a point. Yeah. It took a full point off for me because I really hated how much they changed what they were doing. Yes. And it was on purpose. It wasn't like, ooh, you know, just, accidental bad writing like there was there was a purpose to that oh for sure so their intention knocked it down but still seven is a very high rating because it was still very good yeah so i still would recommend it yeah i mean in this sort of i guess the issue with it is it, it sort of carries over from we did a halloween ends review and it carries over to this movie as well the idea of like toxic masculinity <laughs> being your villain and that's basically, the true villain. Yes, and yes. that's basically what they're saying. You know, it's like they have the original sin of being a toxic male, and there's just no redemption from that. There's no redemption. There's no forgiveness. And there's no creature out there that's worse. They genuinely try to make the creature more sympathetic than him at the, at the end. Yes. Okay, on the SJW side. Yeah, man. Again, just couldn't help themselves. They couldn't help themselves. That, that end alone earned one entire rainbow at for least. me anyway at least but there are other things that tick that scale up for me yeah the cops the oh two cops who show up when she calls 911 when she finally gets to that gas station when she escapes and she calls the cops like there's another guy still trapped down there I am not a crackhead. I am not a crazy person. I am a crazy woman person. who's been I am held a woman prisoner and has been held prisoner and has been held prisoner. And I'm telling you that there is. She looks like she's strung out she because she's been out, down in the dungeon for who knows how long. And she's sober yes. and she's talking plainly. The idea and, was that it looked like she was a crackhead or something, right. though. And she clearly wasn't. She clearly wasn't. But the cops still were just very dismissive of her. They're very dismissive of her. Then they take her to the house, even though they don't believe her. And then she's like, we got to go inside. That's the window I broke to escape. And they're like, ma'am, there's nobody in this house. There's no one in this building. No one's being murdered. And the only crime that I've seen so far is you breaking this window. The whole, th that whole scene was such bullshit. Yeah. It's like, even if they thought she was a crackhead, she wasn't acting like one. And they're in the middle of this derelict neighborhood. They wouldn't just leave her there. They just like, they're like, ma'am, listen, you're obviously, you're the only one breaking the law around here. So, uh, bye. And they leave and it's like, she's just standing here by herself. She clearly needs medical attention. Yeah. She's been trapped into this house for two weeks and they just drive off. And it's like, no, that's not how that scene would have went down. Well, and they, they also set up earlier on that the thing only comes out at night and yes. they leave her there stranded. Again, this is in the middle of a fucked up neighborhood in Detroit where there's like the houses every house aren't is, even, all the houses are derelict. Apart. They're derelict. All of them are, they're except just... for the B Airbnb. Right. That's the only one. So now basically she's stuck there and the sun's setting. Right. So the thing's gonna come back right. out. And now to do that scene properly, the cops could have been like, oh my God, this is crazy. You say you were trapped in this house. Let's see, I don't see any track marks on your arms. Okay, you're acting coherent. Let's like, let's go in and see, we'll just check it out. Yeah, it was, and then the creature can just kill them. It's weird because they could have like created more fodder for the creature. Right. You could have added. And they chose you not could have had to. another suspense scene by having them actually go in there right. and the thing taking them out. Right. But not making it so stupid right. that they don't believe her. Right. No. Instead, the agenda comes first. Then the movie comes second. That's what I'm saying. And then like all the 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 firm logic based decisions that were 
that were the foundations at the beginning were thrown out. Like, as soon as those right. cops sort of came in. Because now those cops are, they're, they're going against what this whole movie has established for the mm -hmm. last hour and a half. That people in this movie are making good decisions. Yeah. And bad things are still happening. Yeah. Then they show up and it's like, oh no, no. We can't have these two guys you have cliche, do a single yeah. good thing. Yeah, you have cliche they're clearly movie just as bad, bad as yeah. anyone else. And then they leave and it's like, She's like, okay, well, I guess I have to save this guy myself. It just felt lazy. It felt agenda-driven and lazy. Yeah, at the end, you, you figure out that the whole thing has sort of just been, disappointingly, an agenda-driven. <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing. Yeah. So that cop scene, whole second rainbow for me. Yeah, man, that's, that's rough. Like, that was just... I will give them credit, though, for that, because at least one of the cops was not white <laughs> <laughs> it was a black cop and a white cop you know because it was the black cop who was being the and the i wonder dick. how painful it was for them to be like yeah they well, wanted to make both white oh fuck yeah but you know they, they were did. like well we, we can't go too on the nose yeah we'll just go like just adjacent to the nose yeah and then when they when the cops drive away the white guy still had to get his look in like, yeah the white whatever, guy's like, like you piece of shit and then drives away and it's like <laughs> okay was that necessarily absolutely not <laughs> absolutely not but other than that i mean there wasn't really much else. Rainbow-wise, I'm gonna give the film three rainbows. Okay, that's fair. Because the impact of it, at the very end, you find out that it really, like as I said, was an agenda-driven <laughs> message in the movie. And right. it was so, it was very overt at the end. At the end, it was painfully overt. Yes. So I'm, I, I think I'm on the same page. I'd say a three. Yeah. 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 That's, that's where I'm at with that. Had had Justin Long like redeemed himself, but would you still had the cop scene yeah, in it. Yeah, then it would maybe, maybe half of one for me. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, you know, it you... wouldn't have made that scene as annoying to me. Same. It would have been like, okay, this is just a one-off, isolated scene that they felt like they had to throw in there. Yeah. Instead of making these guys like helpful or competent, they're just straight-up pieces of shit, and then that would have been it but the end really solidified the whole underlying theme. Who's the barbarian? Who's the real barbarian? <laughs> okay. Still, very good movie. Solid, solid movie. But just be aware. The director obviously has skill. Yes. It's really talented. It's um, a good movie, but if you are a toxic male, you might take offense to this film. Right, you might be triggered. You might be triggered. Yeah. So just be careful going into that. Yeah. And I'm sure that that's the messaging behind it. If you are a real misogynist, you will hate this movie. I could see that. Sure. Yeah. If you're a piece of shit who like hates women, I can see you. You might go into this movie like, yeah, Justin Long should win 100%, even if he raped 50 women. Dude, yeah. It's, but dude, no. It's like, a, you know, it's a total lecture. Like, if you like Justin Long in any way, then you need to reevaluate yourself. Mm -hmm. You know that's like what they were fucking thinking. Of course, yes. They thought they were going deep with that one. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it was actually pretty surface level. Yeah, very surface level. You didn't really hide that one too well. And I'm sorry, but he was fucking hilarious. He was. <laughs> Best part of the movie. I love watching him. Yeah, I'd watch it again. Just his scenes I'd watch again. Yeah. If not the whole film. 100%. Yeah. I don't know, have you guys seen Barbarian? Uh, if you have, it doesn't really seem like too many people have been watching this movie. No, we were the only ones in the theater when we went to go see it. Yeah, I mean, granted, like it had it been, had out, been for out for a few weeks. weeks right. um, but, uh, we're sort of late to the game yeah, on this we're one. We're curious about your comments. Yeah, so uh, let us know.